Egypt is building a skyscraper that will surpass Dubai's Burj Khalifa in height, the Oblisco Capital. The massive $3 billion skyscraper will stand at 1,000 meters in height and become the centerpiece of the new $45 billion capital city that is planned to replace Cairo. Set to be completed by 2030, the building will be built in the shape of a pharaonic obelisk using different materials. It will have 170 floors, which will be used for shops, hotels, apartments, theaters, cafes, and even entertainment venues. Ventilation panels that rotate according to the angle of the sun will be installed to regulate the temperature inside the building. The new administrative capital is part of Egypt Vision 2030, which aims to achieve sustainable development through economic diversification, social justice, innovation, and regional leadership. Do you think the Oblisco Capital will actually be built and dethrone the Burj Khalifa as the tallest skyscraper ever? Shalom. Kaalayim la Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rakakodash. Double honors to the elder apostles, the elders of Great Millstone as GMS. Peace and bless to the Akim and a few Akwath across the four winds. It's your brother Batamaya from Great Millstone, Houston, coming to you with a quick hit. Now, I saw this and it sparked my spirit that, hey, these heathen, especially Esau Edom, you know, and the rest of his compadres or his fake allies, you know, they're going to continue to build while we're in captivity. Because who's going to build that? Who's going to construct that? They're going to use the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And also, which are the, the non-important heathens, you know, going to have them also working on this, whatever they're trying to build this, uh, I'm going to call it the, the a witchcraft stick. Because that's all it is going into is this witchcraft. But I had a few precepts, and Lord willing, this is a edifying and straight to the point. Psalms 49 and 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. And their dwelling places to all generations. They called their lands after their own names. Now this is mainly Esau Edom, you know, who's the, Job nine and twenty four. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked, but also these other heathen nations believe that they're going to continue to rule, or they're going to have next up, like you have China. You know, they think they're they're going to be next in line, or any of these other heathen power nations, so called, that don't really have any power. But the Lord Yahweh whom the ignor the world ignorantly calls God, you know, the most high Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, you know, Yahweh Shai is going to come to destroy. Uh, next precept I had was Malachi chapter one, verse four, whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. This place looked pretty desolate, you know, in Egypt, you know, it's uh, pretty much desert-like. Thus said the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai of hosts, that's of armies. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai hath indignation forever. The Lord is angry with the wicked every day. You know, indignation is his righteous anger. So that you're supposed to be angry with the wicked every day. But the main point I wanted to give is they shall build, but I will throw down. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is going to throw down with, with the, uh, the heavenly host, the angels. You know, they're going to come in those chariots. They're going to have a field day blowing those, uh, <laughs> this building up. It's probably not going to even get close to being in the works. But the scriptures do say, you know, that Esau Edom shall try to fill his belly. But, hey, he's going to vomit all that up, especially those riches. You know, the the riches of the, the wicked are going to be transferred to the riches of the righteous forever and ever. In Revelation 19 and 12, this is gonna group Esau Edom and the rest of these heathens. You know, when the Lord sends Yahweh sends Yahweh Shah to come throw down. Revelation nineteen and twelve, his eyes were as a flame of fire, going into Yahweh Shah, and on his head were many crowns. So it's gonna take over the rulership of all these other heathen nations because it belongs to Yahweh Shah anyway. Then under Yahweh Shah is going to be King David. Then under King David is going to be the elect of the elect of the nation of Israel, which are going to be the 144,000 men, the 12,000 men from the 12 tribes of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But even the rest of the one-third falls in under that, the men, women, and children of Israel, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and those that spirit resonates with this truth. And their lineage goes back to the nation of Israel. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. 
and that's going to his rank or his position on the right hand side of Yahweh. And then last precept I had was Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 verse 7. There be nine things, <clears throat> Salaki, there be nine things which I have judged in mine heart to be happy. And a tenth I will utter with my tongue, a man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. So we're going to have joy of our children. We're not going to be in captivity anymore. You know, we're going to be sovereign, but also we're going to see the downfall of our enemy. We're going to watch these buildings come down crashing alongside with the, the rulership. But Lord willing, this was edified to the hopeful elect. Call Halayim La, Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the elder apostles, the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom and Kwame Ashallah.